If you've ever wondered how dental cavities develop, then this is a video you want to watch. Today I'll be talking about the structures of the tooth and the stages of dental cavity formation. The human tooth is divided into two parts. We have the crown and the root portion. The crown portion is made up of the enamel, the dentin and the pulp, while the root portion is made up of the cementum, the dentin and the pulp. The enamel is the outermost layer of the crown. It is translucent and it is made to protect the tooth crown. It is also the hardest substance of the human body. Yeah, you heard right. It is actually harder than the bone. This is because it is highly mineralized. It is made up of 96% of inorganic material, mainly called hydroxyapatite. Don't worry about that. The second layer after the enamel is called the dentin. It is slightly yellow in color and that's what actually gives rise to the color of your tooth. The dentin has more of an inorganic content, making up about 70% of its composition. Because of this, this makes the dentin quite soft. It is actually softer than the enamel. The third layer is called the pulp, which is the innermost layer of the tooth structure. It is soft and it is the living portion of the tooth, which comprises of blood vessels and nerves. While the cementum actually surrounds the outermost portion of the root aspect of the tooth. Now, it actually helps as a medium to connect the tooth to the bone. For a dental cavity to develop, there are certain factors that are necessary. Number one would be a tooth. You need teeth present in the mouth for a cavity to develop. Number two would be bacteria. Bacterial plaque needs to be present for this to take place. Number three is the substrate. When I say substrate, I mean carbohydrates, especially simple sugars or simple carbohydrates, or what we call refined carbohydrates. Number four is time. You need a lot of time for a cavity to develop. It takes time for the tooth to be weakened, so time is necessary. When food particles are left on the surface of the teeth, the bacteria present in dental plaque tends to break them down. This results in the formation of an acidic byproduct, which over time tends to soften the tooth enamel. As this process goes on, eventually the softened enamel gives way and then a cavity is formed. Now, simple sugars, which we call refined carbohydrates, is the bacteria's main source of energy. So they are able to break down simple sugars easily, thereby producing the acidic byproduct. So thereby, a diet that is high in simple sugars is a risk factor. Now let's go to the stages of cavity development. The first stage is white spots. The acid produced by the bacteria attacks the enamel, thereby leading to a process called demineralization. What that means is that the enamel is softened. Now at this stage, the decay is actually preventable because the tooth structure is still complete. Limiting sugary foods, practicing good oral hygiene, and using fluoride products can actually help the tooth reverse the situation by a process called remineralization. The next stage is enamel decay. Now when the breakdown process is much more than the makeup process, the enamel tends to break down leading to a cavity. Now once the enamel surface breaks down, the tooth can no longer repair itself. Because the enamel is made up more of an inorganic component, usually there are no signs and symptoms, so patients may not even know they have a cavity. Next, we have dentin decay. Once the acid is able to go through the enamel, the underlying dentin becomes affected. Now, because the dentin is more porous and is made up more of an inorganic component, you have the decay process actually progressing far more quickly than it should. It is usually at this stage that the first sign of toothache actually starts, especially sensitivity to cold stuff, hot stuff, or even sour and sweet stuff. Now, as the cavity gets deeper, the sensitivity and discomfort tends to increase in intensity. The next step is pulp decay. If the dental cavity is not treated on time, the cavity can eventually affect the middle structure of the tooth, which is the innermost layer called the pulp. Remember, this pulp contains nerves and blood vessels, so when it is affected, you definitely have much more severe toothache experience. Because of the bacteria, the pulp tissue eventually breaks down and dies. It then becomes infected, which can then lead to pus formation. And if this is not properly managed, it can eventually affect the surrounding structures. The last stage is the formation of an abscess, or what we call pus. Now, if no action is taken at the pulp decay stage, the infection travels deeper into the tooth, all the way down to the root tip. From there, it can actually spread to the bones and to other surrounding structures of the tooth, leading to gum swelling and sometimes just swelling. This usually comes with much more severe pain. 
if you've ever had a jaw swelling from toothache you'd know that the experience can be a very nasty one and this should be taken quite seriously before it becomes a much more serious issue now that you know the stages of dental cavity formation please make good efforts to prevent them from occurring or present early if you have any dental issues so that you can have a chance at saving your tooth or your teeth I'll be talking about the risk factors for dental cavities in my next video. Be sure to like, leave a comment, share this video and subscribe to my channel so that I can get more videos available to you and I will see you in the next one. Bye!